Oh, well, welcome to another video inspired by uh, broken or failed products. In this case, uh, this video is about Triax and inspired by this uh, cockamamie device. I bought a, a couple three years ago at Photocell, Dawn to Dusk. Uh, I installed one with the intention of installing the second one, but 18 months later, the first one fails. I put the second one in, I was in a bit of a rush, needed a, a Dawn to Dusk, and I just forgot about it. And 18 months later, this, uh, the second one's failed as well. Um, and I thought, well, let, let me have a look at repairing it. So I took the lid off and look at this. Um, it's like something out of the ark. It's very heavy. Uh, it, it, the time I bought it, it cost about $15, $20. I think they're still on sale now. Uh, I'll try and get uh, a, a, a listing on the screen for you in post. Um, and, the, and the reviews on these things were great. Um, nobody saying that they work wonderfully. I, I guess everybody installed them, saw that they worked, rushed to eBay or Amazon or wherever they bought from and gave rave reviews only 18 months later, like me, consistently to find out that they failed. It's an electromechanical relay in here. It, it looks like a dropper, uh, capacitor dropper circuit. Well, I'm nothing against, but they're not exactly safe. Uh, and really, this is the 21st century. We need to go solid state. Now, I know a thing or two about resistors and, and MOSFETs, you know, college level stuff, and did a, one or two videos on, on MOSFETs on the screen right now. Um, and I took a deep dive into Triax, the AC equivalent of switching, well, not just Triax, there's SCR, silicon control rectifiers and silicon control switches, all from the same family called Thyristors along with Diax. And uh, I'm thoroughly, not gonna even get a, you can get a book review in this video, how's that? Um, uh, took a deep dive into uh, Triax in this book here, really recommend it, superb book. And started playing around with them and came up with a circuit, bit, bit hit and miss, bit trial and error, nothing, nothing theoretical, uh, but it was a very uh, alarming circuit because I, I could only, I could have, <laughs> it only had three components, what's that, a bit of, a bit of dinner. Um, a Triac, BT136 in this case, uh, the um, common garden Triac that most people are familiar with, a resistor and a light dependent resistor. And I must admit, well after I got this circuit working, uh, I thought, wow, that's good. Uh, I better go and take a look at other people's circuits. And I did. Uh, there's, qu there's quite a few on the interwebs. Um, s some are incredibly complicated. Some necessarily so because um, they, um, well, they, 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 they're doing other things apart from switching. They're doing a bit of dimming or perhaps they've got a snubber circuit in because they're handling inductive loads like motors. Uh, and that, that I understand. But some still were even more complicated. Uh, yes, some were kind of allowing you to switch off of a, a microcontroller. I don't need that in this, this instance, but really, some I just didn't understand at all. So I did feel like I, you know, put an engine together and had a lot of parts left over. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure there's somebody out there who's uh, got a, a, a couple of um, PhDs in Triax who put me wrong as to why this circuit shouldn't work, but it does, so I'll share it with you. But first of all, let's go into the Triac itself. I'm sure most of you are aware of it three pin device, um, uh, it can handle, you know, usually high currents, such as, you know, this one I think is like four amps max, um, but it's, it, it handles, you know, AC voltages, you know, to its credit, and there are th three pins, um, I'll call them T1, T2, uh, and, and gate, sometimes you'll see these referred to as M1, or MT1 and MT2, or A1 and A2. It doesn't really matter, we'll call them T1 and T2 for the time being. And it's a multi-layer device inside. It's, it's what's called an asymmetrical semiconductor. And a bit more about that in a second. It's got a tab on the back. Ah, right, a tab. Um, yeah, I should have said this at the start. Triax, mains devices. Please don't do this at home. Just watch me make a fool of myself and, and potentially injure myself with this. But don't, don't do this at, at home uh, or as... Uh, and as Ven Dr. Venkman might say, um, all right, important safety tip. Thanks, Egon. Right, so let's got we've got that out of the way. Uh, I'll, I'll get a bit more onto safety in a minute, but uh, please be very, very careful with these devices. So what we have <clears throat> is a, well, a straw bulb in here because that's what I'm dealing with here, isn't it? Is that a good bulb? Oh, that'll do. Um, And we have AC here and positive, sorry, positive and negative, or phase and neutral, I suppose. Um, 
And what you want, obviously, is current to flow between T1 and T2, and there are multiple NPN layers in here. And the way to get these things cascading is to put uh, a current on, on the gate. And each, each tribe has its own uh, specifications as to what sort of current it will accept. And the interesting thing is that once the current is on there, it switches on and it latches. Pro well, I'll mention it now, there's a, there's a proviso there. The, the load current has to be of sufficient threshold for it to latch. But once you switch that on, uh, current will flow internally from T1 to T2 and the circuit is made. So just put a, put a current on here. Now most people connect it to T2, that's the obvious thing to do. You can't connect to T1. Um, well again, I'll, I'll dive into that now. Take a look at the layers on the screen right now. You, could, you can see this is not a symmetrical device. In fact, it was, it was messing around with the gate and T1 uh, on DC that uh, made me uh, think about this, this circuit. But uh, you can, you're effectively shorting the gate, uh, grounding it from, if you connect it to T1. But T2, you will activate the device. And it won't switch off until the voltage and current on here falls to zero. Well, actually, the voltage falls to zero. Is that correct? Yeah, the voltage falls to zero. Uh, and it will do 50 times a second here in the UK, uh, but by that time we've now got T2 in negative on the negative half cycle, and as long as that's greater than uh, the negative half cycle on T1, then we're good to go, and it switches back on again. So it switches on, you know, 50 or 60 times a second, or 50, 50 or 60 times a second. Now some of the circuits I think I mentioned earlier, with the dimmer circuits and things that people are doing, it, it, it's not very even switch on and switch off over the half cycle at a zero crossing. Um, people put diacs in. That, that's, a, that's a member of the Thyristor family. That's a, a two-way diode for AC purposes with a breakdown threshold, a bit like a Zener, but in both directions, about 30 volts, and it evens out the switching in both directions. So that's, uh, that's, that's, that's your triac. Is there anything else to say about this? Yep, the tab is live. Did I say that? The tab is live on the BT136. Um, it's connected to T T2. Uh, I measured a couple of hundred ohms across uh, the two, but still be aware of that. And I'm just amazed that these things aren't shipped with the default of um, an isolated tab. You can get isolated tab triacs, uh, and you can also get uh, triacs with a, a built-in snubber cir circuit for in inductive loads, which is great if you're switching a motor on or some sort of electromagnet or something. Um, and it seems like the, the, the what are they called, the Venn diagram of um, uh, triacs with snubber networks and isolated tabs is a single circle. Um, so I commend maybe an isolated one to you because if you've got a heat sink on this, you're actually going to uh, extend the lethal surface of this thing uh, in an attempt to cool it down and electrocute yourself. So anyway, one of the other features is, of course, it can work with AC, but it can also work with DC. You can use this as a MOSFET, um, and it was messing around on DC in the hopes of not killing myself playing with this device, uh, that, that I was able to get this thing to switch. Um, let me show you what I've got here. I've got, it's a bit bright in here. Um, I wanted the brightness, obviously, for the LDR to, to demonstrate what the hell was going on. What I've got here is, um, it's hard to see on here, I should turn the bright, 3.33 volts. I've got um, a triac, I've got the negative line connected to T1. I've got the uh, positive line connected T2, nothing's flowing, and so the LED is off. But I've also got this spur from the positive rail, and once I connect that to the gate, is that switched on? No, it's not. It is now. Uh, yeah, you can see the LED flashing, but it's not latching. And this is back to the thing I mentioned earlier, which is the latching um, current. So I turn the voltage up, it will draw more current through there. And now I'm hopefully within the latching range uh, at 3.53 volts. Let's try that. There you go, it's latching. And the only way to turn that off is to disconnect the power. Switch back on again, it's reset, and I can latch it again. So you could use it as a MOSFET switch that only switches on. <laughs> well, I know that might seem a bit stupid, but I guess alarm systems need to have uh, activation, which is difficult to disable. I guess that's your reset combination. And of course, if you're not at within the latching current on the load, you could use it as a low current or low load um, uh, on and off MOSFET. Anyway, MOSFET. Anyway, that, that's, that's um, you know, where I got to 
uh, with the DC thing. And what I decided, let me, let me go back to the circuit and show you exactly what I came up with. And again, if, if, this, if this doesn't make any sense to you experts out there, please, please tell me where I've gone wrong. Uh, so what we want is to connect the ground to T2, but we want to limit the, the current to that. We don't want a lot of current leaking through that, so we want a, a, a big resistor in there. And then we have um, a... How do you draw an LDR? Is it like that? We have an LDR between the gate and T1. Now that will uh, keep the current on the gate low. In other words, it won't activate the switch when uh, the resistance is low during the daytime. At night time, this is an effective open circuit. And so it cuts the line between T1 and the gate and current flows. So that's, that's the circuit. That's what I came up with. And I started experimenting with different values. So um, uh, should we, you know, should we take a, a closer look at this, this thing here? Uh, you, want, you, want, you want to see one of these things uh, o o opened up? Yeah? Let's, let's do that. I'll get another camera. Hop outside and get a hammer and see what happens, eh? Beautiful spring day here in England. Right, let's see. How's that? Is it in focus? Kind of. There it is. Wow. Let's go back inside. That was easy. <laughs> okay. Oh, I've lost a couple of legs. Uh, hang on. Hang on a second. <laughs> okay. So that's what it looks like. Um, Get a piece of paper uh, so you can see that better. Um, I've never seen this other triangle before. I bet there are plenty of images on Google. Uh, or DuckDuckGo, uh, I should have said. Let's see, how's that? I guess that's the, the, that's the, that's the gate there, I reckon. Who is it? That ought to work out. I should have. What have we got there? Oh, no, wait a minute. That's, that's definitely um, T1. So there's T1, um, there's T2 in the middle, and there was the gate, it's been pulled off, and you can see right in the centre, I guess that's the, uh, that's the NPNPN layers. Oh, I thought that might be interesting. So now you've, you've seen the circuit, um, let me tell you what I did. I, I'm sure you, we could work something out with a pencil like the, the constipated mathematician, uh, but instead uh, what I decided to do was put a, a bog standard um, uh, LDR in, and, and remember the, <laughs> the price of all of these components. You know the resistor, the BT one three six, and the LDR came to about. I bought them in bulk, admittedly, but they came to about ten cents. You know that compared to this Leviathan over here. And I do, I do need a, I do need something to to put this stuff in. Um, I thought maybe this little um, vanilla essence bottle with some resin and a couple of uh, 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 rice grains inside to keep it dry might be the thing. But what I thought I would do uh, is, is just connect up the L LDR, connect it up to a connect up the triac BT136 to a lamp, and then uh, put a, a, a variable uh, resistor in here, and, and keep messing around with it until. Uh, I got it at the in the right conditions uh, to switch off when it got dark, and it wasn't terribly scientific. I did well; it was a little bit. I did measure the lux levels uh, at dusk, and then found out that this box here actually provided about the 80 lux I was looking for. Um, so let, let me show you what I what I did. Uh, let me just make sure this damn thing is switched off. Is it switched off? It is. Right, gloves. Let me get some gloves on. Do I have any gloves? Okay. okay, these will do. These these are not electrically isolated gloves, insulated gloves. These are polyurethane coated gloves. Um, they won't stop me from doing anything stupid, but they might just limit the implications. 
Uh, right, so uh, what I have here is a lamp. I'm sure you can see that. A bit more, a bit more thread. And um, the triac has the LDR across uh, terminal one and the gate. That provides the open circuit at night when there is no light, but at least a bleed resistance to deactivate the uh, gate during the day. And instead of a resistor across there, I, uh, I put in a, a, a variable resistor. And I just kept experimenting with it. Not, as I say, not terribly scientific, but you know, each LDR will vary, each triad will vary, and uh, you know, resistors, it depends on their tolerance levels and what have you. So I thought that was the quickest way to sort things out. So when I switched this on, um, I could then play with this uh, uh, 500K resistor. until, you can see now, it's coming on in daylight. Uh, I just turned up the resistance until it didn't come on. And then, just made sure it did come on. Now you see, it's, it's kind of coming on there. I need, to, I need to increase the resistance a bit more. Try that again. Yeah, probably a little bit more. And you can you experiment with this, but by heavens, be careful, won't you? Um, there we go. Does that look about right? It could be, couldn't it? Uh, put your phone in there with a lux level recording, with a screen recorder, and you'll get the right lux level, what you're looking at, and just compare that with... It's 80 lux for me on the um, LG V2, uh, but, but there we go. That, that, that seems about right. Um, so I turn that off. Take off my surgical gloves and then measure the resistance across there. Um, don't forget, you want a high resistance anyway to uh, limit the uh, current drain. Um, oh, come on. The centre one is the sweep, don't forget on these things. Okay, 200 and 70k that's it that's that's a mega ohm setting 270k it might be a bit higher i feel like i go up to 300k so that's the settings for me and my ldrs um and uh the the circuit very simply is uh um <clears throat> let me see i've got one already made up no i don't okay well there's the circuit there you just put a a 300k resistor between the gate and T2 and an LDR between the gate and T1 and then connect that to your load and then make sure this is you know adequately sealed and isolated and you've got yourself a, a simple Don dust switch. If you found that interesting um, give us a thumbs up. All the best. Cheers.